Hey YouTube, Colorful Coats here. So today I want to do an algorithm uh, called Print Spiral Matrix or Print Matrix in Spiral Form. Uh, I believe it's on Leak Code, um, but I mostly heard about this algorithm from word of mouth. It's pretty popular and it's pretty interesting. It did not come intuitively to me at all. Uh, I had to research many different breakdowns on this algorithm. Um, the print spiral form matrix. <laughs> um, in my blog post below, I'm going to do several versions of it. A popular version people use is the mutation, like mutating uh, the matrix um, in place, but that has the worst space time complexity ever, so I'm not going to show you that ver version. We're just going to um, iterate through uh, a 2D array and we're going to just fill in a new list um, in the way that it's supposed to be. I'm going to show you the visual visualization. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do the visual visualization and then we're going to do the Python implementation. Um, yeah, and if, and if this video is difficult for you to grasp, um, I recommend that you use pythontutor.com. Just take the code from this video, take it from the blog post below, um, and just do the walkthrough yourself. Uh, you may understand it a lot better than you will using this video or the blog post. Alright, so let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, let's get started. Alright, so now for the visualization. So. What are we being asked to do? We're given a 2D array, uh, it's a matrix, it's a grid, whatever you want to call it, and we have to print it out in spiral form. So we're going to iterate through the array, and we're going to print it out in a spiral. Boom, boom, boom. So from this spiral, we should have returned 1, 2, 3, A, which is the first row, and then B, C, D, which is this column going down, and then going backwards, we do 12, 11, 10, and then we print seven, and then four, five, six, nine, and eight. All right, so essentially, we have, we're doing four major steps, all right? We're moving to the right, and then we're moving down, we're moving backwards, and we're moving up. And we're going to keep on repeating that. We're going to move right, we're going to move down, we're going to move backwards. Um, and if this were bigger, if uh, after we move backwards, it would go up. But yeah, so we're going to start with this example. Um, or maybe I might do a simpler example, depending, because this, this has gotten pretty, pretty big. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys understand this. I put up these strings here so that they're more readable, not just numbers. Um, also, it doesn't matter if we're using uh, n by n, which is the same rows, the same, the same amount of rows, the same amount of columns, or n by n, where I, uh, there's more columns than there are rows, or vice versa. Um, it will still work, and yeah, let's get started with the Python implementation. So here um, we've created a function called spiral, and it has an argument, which is the matrix um, right there. And we've also created a variable that is a list. This is what we're, we will be returning. This will be the end result. Um, and then now we're going to create another variable called rows. And rows is going to be the length of the matrix. OK? So as you can see right here, the length of the matrix is one, two, three, four. So the rows will be equal to four. And then after that, we're going to check if rows equals, this is going to be our first edge case, equals zero, return result. And that will just return an empty list if it equals zero. Um, next, we're going to create another variable, a. This will be our helper variable. We're going to have call index. This will be equal to the length of the matrix, but the columns. So the length of this first row is four. So we know that that's four columns. Um, but we want the column index, so we're going to minus 1. 
So there are four columns, but the column index will be equal to three. We're gonna have B equals zero, and we're gonna have also row index. And row index basically equals rows minus one. Because as you can see here, rows is the length, which is four, but the rows index, because indexes start at zero, it will be minus one. Um, yeah. So now we're going to create our while loop. So we have while A is less than or equal to the column index, and B is less than or equal to the row index. These are our helper variables. A will be helping the column index, and B, and B will be assisting the row index. Um, I hope you all can see that far. So now we're getting to the meat of the algorithm. Remember that we will be going right, right, down, backwards, and up. First case, we will be going right. So we're gonna do a for loop. We're gonna do for i in range a, which is zero, to call index. Remember, call index right now is three because we have zero, one, two, three, okay? And we want to get this first row. Uh, there are three indexes of columns but we wanna grab the first row, so we're gonna to have to do call index plus one. So now this will be zero to four, so that we're grabbing everything. We're grabbing zero, one, two, and three, um, up to four. Yeah, so. Then we want to append it to results. So we're gonna do result dot append, and we're going to be pending the matrix a, which is zero, the first, this is zero, the first row, and then I. So I will be iterating. Um, so let me create an imaginary result list in real time. Um, so first iteration, we're grabbing here. We're grabbing one because A is zero, matrix zero, and I is zero. So we're doing one. And then I is going to iterate, and now it's going to be 0, 1. Um, yeah, 0, 1. So 0, 1 is going to be 2, and then it's going to be 3, and then it's going to be 4. So I is going to go, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. And it grabbed all of those. And then next, we want to grab down here. So we're, so now that this row has been done, we need to move in grabbing these columns. Index one, two, and three also. So that's gonna be the next step. So now we're just going to increment B, and we're gonna make it plus equal one to show that there's one row down, because B is the helper for row index. So next we're gonna do the next for loop. We're gonna do for I in range B. Because we're moving down, we, we, we finished the first row. So now B equals one, it's no longer zero. So we'll be starting from the zero, uh, from the one index. So we're gonna do B, and we're gonna do it to row index plus one. Because remember, row index is also three. Um, Row index is three because there are zero, one, two, three rows. Um, well, there's four rows, but those indices are three. And then we're gonna do a plus one because we wanna grab eight, 12, and 16. Um, we wanna grab all those numbers, so we have to do a plus one so that it goes from index one to four. Yeah, it goes from one to, to four, so everything before then. And then we're gonna just append it again. 
y'all, I hope I am explaining this uh, correctly. We're just getting started and I'm already running out of space. <laughs> it's gonna be I and then the call index because we're grabbing the last, the, the last elements of the array currently right now. So we're grabbing A, 12, and 16. Those are all the last elements in these arrays. All of their indices are three because zero, one, two, three right now. So we have, this would be one, three, this would be two, three, this would be three, three in terms of I. So like I said, one, three, two, three, and three, three. And as you can see, I added it here. We have eight, 12, and 16. So now we want to move backwards. We want to grab 15, 14, and 13. So we're going to be iterating backwards, and we'll also, we'll also be using a for loop for that as well. Now we have to decrement the call index because we just got rid of an entire column. So we're going to minus equal one. And then now that we'll be working backwards on the, the bottom rows, we're going to check if B is less than or equal to rows index, which it should be because we still have rows to work through. And now we're going to start with our backwards iteration. I am practically falling on the ground. <laughs> so we're going to do for I in range call index oh gosh and then b minus one and then negative one so remember we just minus call index so now call index is two so from now on it will be going up to two b was one primarily and then now we're starting um, now b minus one is gonna be zero. So now that we're doing for i in range call index, b minus one, and then negative one, we're, we're iterating backwards. So now for i is gonna be two. So i is gonna be two, it's gonna start from two, then it's gonna to go to one, then it's gonna to go to zero. Okay? So we're moving backwards. So now we're going to append results dot append row index um, remember row index right now right now is three um, we're on the th we're on we're on the fourth row but the fourth row is the third index and I so it's going to be three two three one and then three zero. Okay, I'll show you right now. So we're grabbing three two, three one, and three zero. We're starting at call index. So it's going down from two, one, and zero. So we're going backwards. So we've essentially grabbed this. So next we just have to go up. And I'm, I'm going to have to find another board for this. <laughs> I'm not going to go that low on the floor. I don't mean to confuse you, but I had to go to a new board. But here is the uh, going backwards algorithm. We just grabbed 15, 14, and 13. And now we need to go up. But before that, we're just going to have to minus equal row index by 1. Um, because we just got rid of a whole row. So now we want to go up. We want to grab 9 and we want to grab 5. We're going to go if A is less than or equal to the call index. That means that we still have columns left. We're going to do a for loop. So we're going to, we're going to also go backwards again. For I in range row index b minus 1, negative 1. Remember, right now, row index is 2. It's no longer 3 because we got rid of 
an entire row. We're done with that. We're done with that row, and we minus by one. So we're going to be grabbing index two row and index one row. So we're going to append it to the list. Result dot append matrix i. Remember on first iteration, i is oops, that's not pretty. I is two, and then A is still zero from the beginning. So we have, we're gonna be going from two zero, and then we're gonna go um, one zero. Because I will be moving from two down to one, and then it's gonna stop. And then after that, we're gonna increment A again. So A plus equals one. So now, we are done with this. So just we're gonna repeat the same algorithm again uh, as we did when we went right. Finally, back to our original board, we wanna go right again. So now we're gonna grab six and seven. We finished uh, going up, so now it returns again. It hits this while loop. The condition is still true. So now it's gonna do for i in range a, which is one this time because we iterated a plus one and call index plus one. Um, right now, call index is two, plus one would be three. So we're going from one to, to three, range one to three. And then we're gonna result dot append matrix A. So matrix A would be one, and then I, which is also one. So we're grabbing six, and we're adding that, six. And then we wanna grab seven. So now it's going to be, um, it's gonna be matrix one, and then it's gonna be I two. So we've grabbed seven. And then now we have to go down, and we're basically just repeating the same algorithm over and over until finally we hit here, and then it just returns the results outside of the function. So that's the end of the explanation. I hope you all understood it very well. Um, I will be including a screenshot in this video because I did not get to show the last line of code which just returns uh, the results. But if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. And of course, check out uh, the blog post which will have a breakdown step by step. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon and I'll be making a lot more videos. You take care, bye.